G'day, Ziggy D here, and welcome to the level 35 recap for my Stormcaller Templar. These uh, videos are designed just to give you a bit of insight into the leveling process for these builds, and just to give you an update on what I'm thinking in terms of how I'm going to adapt the build, and uh, how I'm feeling the skills and everything are playing out at the moment. In the end, it uh, ends up being just a bit of a, a guideline for how you guys can go about leveling this build if you're playing it yourself. And I know a few of you guys are playing this build as well. Now I planned this out initially on uh, a live stream that I did. We uh, we live streamed some browser action on slow Australian internet. It was pretty good, like a uh, very low quality stream. But uh, you guys helped me plan out a build, and uh, you know it was looking pretty good. This was before the l l release of Stormcall, so uh, we didn't know everything about it, but we just planned out some of the basic ideas. And so far things are working out okay. But I still haven't quite decided the full direction the build will take yet. So let's talk a bit about how things are now. The reason I've chosen le level 35 is that's a few levels after uh, skill ge all of the skill gems become available to you, basically. So I'm only using some of them now, but I'm starting to be able to test out some of the actual concepts of the build. Now, at the moment, I'm sort of moving forwards, assuming that I will be self-casting Stormcall. However, I've also planned out a build, and I'll put both of these in the description below, for if we happen to decide to go dual totems with this build. Now, it's not too much to adapt them, and I haven't yet decided whether I hate st casting Stormcall or whether it's fun. Uh, I figure after another 20 or so levels, I probably would have decided by then whether I absolutely hate it or whether it's fun. So far, I'm having fun with it, but I, uh, yeah, I want to kind of just play that one by ear. Because uh, self-casting Stormcore, you can be more effective with it. You can lead mobs and things like that. Like, I can place this in front of this guy to make sure I hit him. And uh, totems tend to not do that. So totems can be actually a little bit effective. You'll get totems overkilling mobs and things like that. But it's also not a super responsive feeling spell. Like, it's not like AK where you cast, it hits the mobs, the mobs often get stunned, and you get that instantaneous, like, life leech and hit, and you get that instant feedback. Whereas with Stormcall, you know, you, you're stacking up a series of marks, and then it's going off. So it feels a little bit of difference, it's a little bit of an adjustment, and we'll see how that sort of plays out as to which build I end up going with with that. So at the moment, you'll see I'm using Stormcall with fast casting, that's the support gem I feel is most worth it on a two link just and uh, the spell works as awesomely just with the two link like that so far like as you can see I can just smash things here I'm currently up to farming docks in here on level 35 this is like a slightly level zone lower level zone obviously but uh, even in docks it's pretty much smashing things in there it just does a ton of damage it's really really nice so uh, we have now on the passive tree we are uh, have only just sort of gotten to uh, static blows and a chance to shock nodes here. So this is actually, this was a huge jump once I got this. I noticed I was doing a lot more damage because uh, each individual hit of Stormcall was shocking more often, and that's amplifying the damage of all of the other Stormcalls. Now, I had picked up Ark and I'd been leveling it up, and I was finally able to throw it on a totem. I currently have it linked on Spell Totem and Elemental Proliferation. And obviously, the plan for this, if I go self-casting route, is to use an Ark Totem to proliferate shock stacks. So you'll see with this guy, these guys will be shocked pretty much straight away, even if I don't curse them. And then their, their bodies will then proliferate shock stacks to anything else around in the area. So it works out pretty nicely. I can do this. I can actually curse these guys and amplify the effectiveness of that. And uh, heal shock stack, and I can deal then extra damage with my actual Stormcall ability. It also tends to distract them and hold them still as well, which is quite good because uh, mobs moving around a lot is a bit hard to target with Stormcall. So that's the plan for that. I'll pr pretty much use that, probably use maybe a quality added lightning damage eventually to give that more chance to shock. And I uh, haven't quite else decided what else I'd be putting on that, that Arc Totem there. Probably just on a 4 link in the end. And uh, we'll have our Stormcall on the 5 link. So as you can see, I'm using some basic twin gear. This is a bit of a bankrolled character for me since it is my second character in Nemesis League and I feel like, well, I might as well bankroll it a little bit. And uh, I've been, the main ones are uh, the uh, Dodra's Tenor and uh, the uh, Stone of Lazwa here. Uh, these are not you know, hugely great items, but they have a nice synergy. This reduces your cast speed, gives you a lot of extra spell damage, whereas this increases your cast speed. It also gives you a spell block chance, so that's why I'm using Temper Shield at the moment. I really like Temper Shield with this build from a thematic point of view, but uh, I don't expect... Oh no, we've got Perpetus. Let's see if I can take out Perpetus here, alright, without dying. <laughs> I don't want to rip in the video. There we go, just obliterated purposes. Nice stuff, cool. <laughs> so, uh, what, what was I even up to? I've, I've totally forgotten now. But uh, yeah, using these two items there, uh, I really like Tempest Shield from a thematic point of view. 
in this build, but I don't think we'll be able to run it at endgame. But I'm using it for leveling now, it works pretty well. I've also been using Purity of Lightning as well, uh, against certain enemies where I need more lightning resist and things like that. So you can use Purity of Lightning, Ice and Fire just to level up. And I've been able to start using Arctic Armor now a bit as well, but it's to the point now where it, it does drain my mana when I move around. So I use it in docks if I see there's a lot of Void Bearers. If I see some Void Bearers, I, I simply hit that real quick. And uh, that, you know, that will protect me from LMP boy bearers and things like that pretty well. Pretty well, because I'll show you guys a, a bit of footage at the background. But uh, we did have one of my party members that I was leveling up with. Rip to an LMP void bearer, a rare LMP void bearer. It's a very real risk when leveling any hardcore character because you kind of get into docks, start cruisily farming in there, and uh, that's where you often have deaths. I've seen countless deaths and had my own deaths to LMP void bearers many times. And that's why we're making another Arctic Armor build in the end there as well. So in terms of gear, pretty basic stuff. I've just been using a, a Scepter with some spell damage on it. It has pretty nice spell damage and elemental damage. Uh, I've just been mostly going for Ellie damage. Faster casting seems to take care of the cast speed. And we also have uh, Prestigiation here for a bit of extra cast speed and uh, mana and all things like that. I find I, I'm sometimes running out of mana self-casting this. Uh, it does you know, tend to chill it up somewhat quickly. It's not an expensive skill, but you cast it a lot. So uh, along with, you know, using Arctic Armor sometimes and having my auras and things like that going on, uh, I, can, I can feel like I'm running out sometimes, but it's not a huge deal. Looks like Temper Shield's actually bugged there. So let's uh, head back to town and I'll just show off the uh, route I've taken on the passive tree up to this point. And uh, was there any other skills to talk about? I haven't really been using Lightning Warp at the moment. Conductivity is pretty essential. As soon as you get that, start running that, and it'll help a lot with uh, getting those shock stacks and uh, doing a bit more damage as well. The one thing I've noticed about um, Stormcall that I'm having to get used to is how spiky lightning damage is. I kind of forgot about this. I haven't played many lightning damage builds, but you look at this, it's 14 to 265 damage. Sometimes, you know, three or four storm calls will hit an enemy, and it'll just look like it de deals no damage. And that's just, you know, if you get a bad streak of RNG, you might hit multiple times for only a small amount of damage. But uh, that's just the nature of lightning and something we'll have to get used to. Every now and then you'll have huge spikes of damage, and uh, other times it just won't do much at all. But that's kind of just the nature. High potential, but, uh, you know, a lot of variation there. So let's take a look at the passive tree. I started up through Templar, just went through here, went through the AoE nodes. This is pretty good stuff. I leveled with uh, Ice Nova a bit. I actually recommend if you just want to have an easier leveling experience, just to level with Ice Nova for a very long time, probably even up to this point. Stormcall is an okay leveling skill, but I don't think it's as good as uh, as uh, Ice Nova just for f pure fast leveling. But uh, it, it does work pretty well, and I've been wanting to use it mostly so I could get used to the spell and decide how I wanted to cast it in the future. So that's the main reason I've actually been using it to level with. And uh, we came up and got Prestigiation straight away for extra cast speed. Got the basic life nodes through the Templar, the uh, Armor ES nodes, got some more resist from in there. I've come up and I've just been grabbing the life nodes as I go past. Eventually, uh, I will fill out the tree a little bit more back here. But uh, for now, just went up into Purity of Flesh. I rushed down and grabbed this Agility node because uh, that's helping a bit with dex requirements. As you see, we don't really get dex anywhere else. So that's pretty nice to have. And then uh, rushing for static blows, and that's the route I've taken there. As you can see, I'm starting to head across the top of the tree now. I'll probably grab Hex Maskers on the way, but I won't go into Whispers of Doom for a while. I don't need a second curse for a very long time. And... Uh, so I'll probably just grab Hexmaster, come through, get Eldritch Battery, rush to Eldritch Battery, and then pick up these mana nodes straight after that, which should hopefully uh, allow me to start using Arctic Armor as well. I'm looking forward to that. But I'll let you guys know how the uh, progression goes in the next leveling recap, and uh, I'll let you know whether I decide to go for Totems or Self-Casting. But I'll put both of those builds in the description below, and you guys can uh, check those out if you want to. If you want to go totems, if you know you want to go totems, you can check out the totem one. If you want to self-cast and try that as well, you can check that out. Not too much difference between them, but a few core differences, obviously, since we have to go down and get our, get our dual totems for, for a dual totem spec. But uh, I'll leave you guys with the footage of one of my uh, compatriots who uh, unfortunately, sadly, left this league uh, in support of me leveling up this build. And uh, anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching. Go on, Pig. Oh! Big Totem! It's crazy, because they, they already filmed the news for Fast the Furious, so like, there's still one left they can show with him in it. Yeah. That's fucked. And that'll be like some Batman stuff, though. That'd be some real true-ass Batman shit. No, 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 no! Oh! Fuck! I just raped! Uh, really? I should've just ran, I was like... Bro, I said that. Man, I said it was LMP. You gotta... <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Oh, that's a part no. of that's a part of rips. Yeah, I'm out of there. I'm leaving that instance. Never, never farm an instance where one of your friends died in. Yep. Well. Sorry, man. Time to sell my shit, and then I'm gonna actually try and power back to you guys. Yeah, I think I could. I'll be home.